Hello, I'm Carl Madison, Executive Director of the Presbyterian Endowment Education and Resource Network. I'm pleased to be sharing this presentation on plan giving for churches. We will be looking at three different levels of plan giving programs from basic to advanced that can help any church get started or improve their plan giving efforts so that their congregants might have the ability to support the church through legacy giving. When people make regular gifts or offerings to the church, they are giving from a small subset of their net worth. Annual giving to the church pulls from an individual's checking and savings account and may be returns on investments. They are drawing on just a small percentage of their total assets in making these gifts. Through planned giving, one is able to give out of other categories of assets. Those assets one accumulates over a lifetime, like real estate, retirement savings, and other assets. These other assets, because they are not liquid assets, are not available for regular giving, but they are often significant considerations in planned giving. Churches have an advantage that no other charitable organization has. Their potential givers are in the pews every week. Because you have their captive attention every week, it is potentially easy to reach them with messages about planned giving. But many churches aren't talking about plan giving. So we will be exploring three levels of plan giving efforts designed to help you communicate more effectively with your congregation about plan giving. The first, a basic level of plan giving program, is designed to start communicating about plan giving in some simple but very important ways. If you're doing nothing, start with the basics, because you should be doing something. Moving beyond the basic level, some come to the second level, which I call the expansive program. At this level, a church is doing more than the minimum. It involves getting some additional structures in place to support planned giving, such as a planned giving committee and more sophisticated giving material. What I describe as an advanced planned giving program is one where you have advanced to the point that planned giving has become part of your culture. Your staff and volunteers have bought into the program and are able to proactively engage people in conversation about planning, giving, and provide information. And you have a more well-rounded, visible structure for drawing people to the program, with more literature and a web presence for planned giving. A church first getting started with planned giving will want to start with the basics. The first level of a plan giving program requires a relatively low level of effort. The idea is to create general awareness about plan giving and to inspire people about the potential for plan giving through an ongoing program of congregational communication. The idea is to cast a wide net with a series of short general messages throughout the year using a variety of different communication methods. The goal is to generate a low hum to begin to build awareness and interest. A good way to generate interest in plan giving is to follow the 12-4-2-1 plan of communication. During the year, include 12 bulletin blurbs or one bulletin announcement a month. Quarterly or four times a year, include a short newsletter article. This could be a testimony where someone in your church is sharing what plan giving has meant to them, or it could be an article from a pastor speaking to the importance of plan giving and the life of the ministry of the church. Twice a year, you should make a worship announcement in the worship service. Again, a good option for this would be a brief testimony from a member who has decided to make a plan gift to the church. And finally, once a year, have a Legacy Sunday, where the focus is on the future ministries of the church as you continue to form the church's identity in the community. While each of these individual items is quite short and simple, the key is keeping a planned giving presence throughout the year. On the resource CD that comes with this DVD package is a document with examples of bulletin blurbs, newsletter articles, and worship announcements. The goal with all of this communication is relatively simple and straightforward. It's not to provide how-tos, or explain particular gift options. It is to simply build awareness about the importance of plan giving and the good it can do in the life of the church's ministry. When a church is ready to take the next step, 
to move beyond the minimum, they can move to the second level strategies, what I call expansive plan giving. The first piece of the expansive program is forming a plan giving committee. The focus of the committee is not to manage investments, but to focus on encouraging people to make planned gifts. They should develop the message used to make people aware of planned giving options. The focus should be on inspiration, not policies. The committee's job is not to ask the question, what do we as the church receive when you die? That's a horrible message. Instead, their goal should be to define the purpose of planned giving and then share it over and over again. Let's look at an example case statement that can help you begin to develop the purpose of plan giving in your church. Notice that the argument is presented from the perspective of why a giver might give, not in terms of the church's needs. Here are a few examples. I am today's link in our Christian chain that stretches from where we have been to where we are going. Here's another example. Our church has a strong focus on faith, family, and future. Very simple. Here's another one. We are all indebted to the past, to those who precede us, and made our ministry possible today. So too, we need to be planting seeds for the future. So our plan gifts are the promise to our children and all those far off whom we will not know, but will be a viable part of the ministry of this church. Your plan giving committee can also develop some literature and giving materials to support your plan giving efforts. This might include a brochure or basic information piece, as well as a response card that people can fill out to express interest, to learn more, or to make their commitment. Another aspect of the expansive level is to prepare an annual report. Doing so promotes transparency in plan giving. It also is a great way to share how plan gifts are making an impact on the ministry of your church identifying the accomplishments that plan giving has helped impact. And finally, it gives comfort to those considering plan giving that the church is responsible and handles your gifts well. At an advanced level, your plan giving program becomes fully embodied in the ongoing ministry of your church, which means that your church staff is equipped to have conversations with people about plan giving. And equipped with information on plan giving becomes a permanent feature on your website. Let me give you a real life example. Not so long ago, I was in a doctor's office. There was a man and his wife in front of us rescheduling their next appointment. The man said to the scheduler, thank you, you've really improved my life. Now I can see. So is this bill correct? I owe you nothing? I feel like I owe you something. The scheduler responded to him, you are so welcome. She smiled and said, we are so glad to help and that we've made a difference in your life. Yep, you are covered. You don't owe us a thing. She went further. She said, but you sound interested. You can certainly do something. Here is some information on charitable giving. You can make what you have received available to those who don't have it and to those who can't pay. Or you can help with research so our resources are even better in the future. Now, what might this look like in your church? Have you ever had a member say something like, well, sure, I would love to give, but I just don't have those kinds of resources. Oftentimes, the church staff or even the pastor might respond with the words, I know these are difficult financial times. I understand. But by doing so, you are giving them an excuse for not making a gift. What an advanced plan giving program looks like is with the staff or pastor following up that message with, I know times are hard, but you may be surprised at some of the creative ways you can give. In most cases, you don't need to give up anything now. An advanced program makes plan giving a part of the ethos of the church. It is no longer a second tier giving platform, but it becomes a part of the ministry of the church. Another possible feature of an advanced campaign is to create a legacy circle. You may be familiar with the concept of a legacy circle since giving societies are common in other philanthropic organizations such as universities and institutions devoted to the arts. These types of societies which recognize those who have made a legacy commitment have proven to be successful catalysts 
for getting a legacy gift. Churches, however, must avoid the potential drawback of such a society being perceived as elitist. Therefore, I recommend that if you create a legacy circle, there be no minimum level of giving as a prerequisite to membership. No matter what your church does now to encourage and utilize plan giving, I hope that you found something new that will help you engage your church in this practice, which has proven to be a significant part of the ministry of many churches.